Hello folks, I'm Dean with Dean's Woodworking. Y'all come on in the shop, make yourself comfortable. Today, we're gonna turn a sea urchin ornament. That's one of these little pink sea urchins, and we're gonna make an ornament out of it. We've got a piece of mahogany here on the lathe, and so we're gonna do a finial out of mahogany. Maybe not the best choice, but I think it'll look good. The first thing we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and shape the top. Now, for every wood turner out there, there's probably a different way of doing one of these ornaments. So I'm just going to show you one of the ways that I do them, okay? So we're going to go ahead and come in. And the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and take the end off of this. And that way we know we're turning with a uh, smooth end there. And then I'm going to take this down just a little bit. Just a little peeling cut there with the skew. And we're gonna take our little 3 8 spindle gouge and come in and basically just put a little cove right in this. Now before we get too far, I'm gonna wanna come into the end of this with a little drill bit. I want to drill right straight through that and that's going to be where we're going to put our eye. So we drill plenty far enough through there that we can uh, get an eye to go through that. Okay, so at that point, I'm just going to kind of round this side back here over. And we're going to go ahead and hit that with some quick sandpaper. This is such a quick little sand, especially with this mahogany, that I'm just going to include it in the video. Some of you have been asking me to do more sanding. So that was uh, 150. We're going to hit it with some 220. And we're going to come in with some 320. And pretty much that's going to be what we're going to put on the top. So we're going to go ahead and bring that back. And we're going to put a tenon on the bottom of that thing. Now very important, when you start cutting in here, make sure you undercut on that top. Because you want it to fit, you want the outside portion to fit that uh, the top of that little sea urchin. Okay, I'm going to go down to about a quarter of an inch. Doesn't have to be exact. I am going to come in with my narrow parting tool and just make sure that that up there is not larger and let's see where we're at here that's just a little bit bigger than a quarter of an inch well we're quite a bit smaller than a quarter of an inch there see where we are we're at 201 thousandths so we're just going to bring that down just a little bit Remember, you can always take it down. You just can't put it back. And in this, it really doesn't matter what size it is. We're going to use that as a little glue joint anyway. If you're going to turn this off, be very careful. Because if you drop this in shavings, you probably won't find it. 
So that's going to be our little top and I'll set it to the side and then we're going to go ahead and start turning on this. Again we're going to take ourselves just a little cut right across the end just to make sure that we're uh, we're good there. Now I've already taken a rough measurement of the inside of this. This is going to fit right up over this portion here. So measuring with uh, the calipers, I figured out that if I put it right on 900 thousandths, I can go in there, I can st fit in there pretty good and move around. So it's a good idea to make those measurements and kind of know where you're going to be. I'm going to start bringing this down a little bit at a time because what I want is I want to be able to push this up in there on the top of this to be resting on the inside of that right up against this. So when it's hanging, all the weight will be on the wood. None of the weight will be on the shell itself. So we know we've got that to where it'll go in there. All we have to do at this point is bring that back now. We're going to check it a few times here. And we want to get it to where that's, that's butted up right against that. Okay, we're going to take our drill bit. I'm going to start it right in the center there. Now what that hole is for is to give us a place to push this into. Okay, so, so we've got our hole in there. What we'll do now at this point is we'll just go ahead and put a gradual dome on the top of this. Why the dome? This is domed, so we want to be able to push that up there, and we want that to be right against the inside of that there. So let's go ahead and bring that up a little bit more, give ourselves a little bit more room there. Looks like we've got about a quarter of an inch more to go there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start rounding that over. Again, we want this to kind of all fit together. We've still got a little bit of room there, so we need to come back just a little bit more. I hope you folks are following me exactly what we're trying to do here. So we're going to get that thing it's just so it's just fitting right up in there. And we're just off of this right here. So we only need to go back about a sixteenth more maybe. Okay now with that there I can tell that we've gone just a little bit too far. No problem. All we've got to do is come in and take a little bit off of this and we're right back in the game. When you get that fit just like you want it, you'll be able to put your finger right there. You'll be able to feel the ornament in there. And yet it is basically touching down here as well. And we are there. We're going to make one little cut here. And at this point, we're going to turn this around in the chuck jaws. We'll come right in here, come in. These are pin jaws that we're using. So we're just pushing right up against where that shoulder is right there. And at this point, we can work our finial here any way we want to. So I'm going to go ahead and start working that down. Some of you may have noticed it's not running exactly true. Again, that's not really a big deal. 
because all of your uh, everything that we've done that's up in the chuck is going to be inside the ornament. And that's another thing, folks, when you're doing uh, spindle and you're doing small stuff like that. I mean, don't get ridiculous, but speed really is your friend. We'll go ahead and turn that off right there. And I'll just go ahead and waste away some wood right here. And what we're doing here is we're just going to make a little flame tip right here on the end. Again, we're not in a big hurry to uh, take that wood away. I think if anything, that's where a lot of folks get in trouble with finials is they try to get into a little bit of a rush with it. Finials are not something that you can be in a rush with. The other thing as you're working these down, if you feel like you need to sand it, go ahead and do so a little bit at a time. Now that's just a little bit of 220 and we'll come back and hit it with a little bit of 320. But then again, it doesn't take much. That's a fairly soft wood. So we're going to go ahead and take some of this down. We'll do some peeling cuts here. And with the peeling cuts, you can get away, get rid of a lot of wood in a hurry. So you do need to be careful. Make sure you're not getting rid of more than you want to. And of course, a good practice is always to work back slowly. Uh, you want to give your, leave yourself a little bit of wood back here so that uh, so that it's supporting your cut up here. And I'm not going to cut this quite as fine as I do a lot of times because, well, this is a pretty soft wood, remember? So I think that's probably about as small as I'll take that. Okay, let's go ahead and hit that with a little 220. And again, remember this is this mahogany is pretty soft wood, so you don't have to sand very long and if you hit the edge of that you're going to lose your detail so i know i want the top of my onion to be right in there probably need to bring that back just a little bit
Now let's go ahead and take the 220 and uh, get that looking like we want it. Okay, so I think we're looking pretty good on our onion and our finial. So we're going to come in and we're going to bring this back just a little bit more. Okay, hopefully you guys are liking that design. Uh, we're going to hit this with some 220 one more time right in here. When you start sanding this right in here, you better roll your sandpaper up and make sure it doesn't hit that outside edge. Because if it hits that outside edge, you're going to knock the edge off of it in a big old hurry. Let's see here, I believe we've got that just about like what we want. Everything's looking good here. Don't go on out here. I'm talking to myself as much as I am you guys there because if you get out here, you better be touching light. Okay, let's get this out of the way. I'm going to come in here just a little bit right there so I can kind of guide it with my finger. Let's turn that off and you guys tell me what you think. Are we looking pretty good there? I'm going to call that done, folks. Let's go ahead and uh, take this out. And we'll assemble this real quick without glue. And I'll let you folks see exactly what you think of what we're doing here. Now, I want to give you guys a visual here. Looking down on top. See how that center hole comes right in there? You can move it around a bit, but we're going to take and take and center it up, push this down. Once we've pushed that down, take a look at what we've got here. You can adjust the size of this to fit as far up in there as you want. I left this one a little big because I wanted you folks to really get an idea of exactly what we were doing there. Decide, design the finial like what you want it to look like. Not necessarily what I'm doing, but what you like. We all have our own taste. Okay, this will give you guys a little better visual of exactly what that looks like. Folks, I'm gonna go ahead and put some lacquer spray on this and I will have some photographs at the end of the uh, video. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Stay safe, stay healthy, and happy turning.